I need to. Yeah, that's I not a big deal. Do. So I that's should do it. I know. I, I wish I would have done it years ago. Do I have to be yes. nominated, or can I just sign up? Just don't want to bust. Okay. You got print. Hey. All right. Let me look into it and see if that time is good with my schedule. But you're right. I'm making note of it. Miss off. Is <laughs> King coming? You guys just do monthly? Or do you do weekly? We do do weekly. Do you get some merit? I don't make three weeks. I carry that in my mind. That's what I love about it. I mean, the people are great, but the values are just. Are you ready again? Yeah. All right. Oh, I love it. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to call the meeting. So now it's 4 4 p.m. Welcome to the Delta Township CIA board meeting. So let's um, the roll call. Uh, Tony. Here. Scott. Here. Alvin. Here. Bill. Here. Laura's not here. Rachel. Here. Thank you. Um, the agenda. We have any adjustments to the agenda today? Or not on my end, unless anyone else has something you want to add or remove. The motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Awesome. Thank you. All those papers stay on it. All right. Motion approved. Item number four already public comments. Anything? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to the approval of the minutes from our November 13th um, meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great as usual. Awesome. Is there a motion to approve? So, so moved. So moved. Support? Second. <laughs> what was the motion to approve? The meeting minutes from um, no, last who, month. Who was the first person? Oh, Rachel. Oh, it's fine. We all did it. Once. Okay. Let's make a All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Yes, the minutes? Yeah. Aye. 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 Awesome. This is passed. Um, all right. Let's quickly move on then to old um, items of business, the quarter action plan final list. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Good. So, there's a memo in your packet um, dated December 7. And it includes um, edited or revised our what, what, what I've been calling the corridor action plan. Um, so based on the last couple of meetings. So we, we talked in October and in November about this draft list. Again, the draft list is just meant to be kind of an inclusive list of uh, our scope of what we are going to be working on the corridor. It's uh, the next phase of the TIF plan. It's really just supposed to be project specific. Um, and it's entirely made up. I mean, I just kind of put a list together of things that we've been working on, things that are reflected in the TIF plan. So it's um, open to, you know, interpretation, addition, subtraction. I'm not expecting that we adopt this plan as any kind of formal anything. Uh, frankly, I'm using it as a work plan for myself to kind of keep me on task and uh, help me divide up some of the bigger projects into smaller bite-sized things that I can tackle. Um, so uh, based on feedback for the last couple of meetings, there were really two big primary things. One was combining two of the items. So two of the, one of them was engaging with MDOT on the upcoming project. And then another of those was to uh, work with a consultant to draft a street, streetscape vision. Those have been combined into one item. And so they've listed as number one, draft a streetscape vision for Saginaw Highway to supplement a future M dot project, and it has all the same action items underneath it. So that's now representative, or it's intended to represent both of those things as one goal. The other thing was to remove, there was previously an item um, about working with the engineering and utility departments to review utilities along the corridor and identify any needed upgrade the rerouting. And just to clarify that, if I wasn't clear before, it wasn't the intent to have the CIA board get involved with like the physical infrastructure of the township it was more to do a study to make to make sure that we are kind of like uh site ready for when projects do come along that we don't have um, any kind of delays or anything related to um having to move something or finding oh my gosh this project has a 
there are three water lines here and they all go to the wrong spot and we've got to do a lot of work now to fix them. Um, so that's been removed um, based on conversation in one of the other meetings. Thank but you. we can always come back to that at some point in the future. That's the beauty of having this kind of flexible list. So um, now we boiled it down to an uneven nine items in the quarter action plan, which is very um, unsettling, but uh, we, can work, we can work with nine. I'm sorry. We can add one at some point or remove one, so it's an even number. Uh, so I, I'll just breeze through, and we've been through them. This is the third time now, but it is very, to me, it's kind of like, this is this is our work um, as, I'm, as I'm envisioning it least in the short term. So what you'll see is I've also added some kind of time span for each of these. They're goals and I, I think realistic goals, um, but that it's gonna help me <laughs> prioritize and then also keep myself on track as I plan out kind of my work year. So number one, this continues to be this draft of streetscape vision for Saginaw Highway. Um, I have this on as a new item of business, but as a quick preview, um, we'll get into this one in a, in a couple minutes, um, kind of where we, the, I think the conversation is gonna be in, later in, in this meeting, how do we get there? Where do we go from here? So we're gonna talk about that, but it's everything that we've talked about today. Number two is the needs assessment for street lighting. Winter's perfect because it gets dark early, so we can start to look at this stuff um, now. Um, my vision for this is kind of a quick and dirty, like where do we have issues of lighting? We may need to crawl, so I can start there. We can come back with that to the group. If we feel like there needs to be a more detailed um, look, we can always talk about working with a consultant to do something more formal. But in the short term, I was thinking quick, quick and dirty. Where are our gaps if they do exist? Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily intended to, to say, this is where we should have street lights mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. what style they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we can get there in the future, but just kind of a quickly, you know, is it, in more of a safety, like, is it too dark someplace on the corridor? Number three, with uh, this economic analysis of corridor, there was a study in 2012. What I'm doing is reading that and kind of encapsulating that, and I'll bring a summary to you in, the, in sometime this winter. And when I say winter 2024, I mean this winter, so 23, 24, like this coming winter in whatever, nine days from now. 11, 10 days. <laughs> and, um, so that, that's with this one. So I'll bring that back to you. We can take a look at it and see the value and kind of talk about what did we do with this back in 2012? What has it done for the for the community? And then what might something um, look like if we were to do another one or something similar to that? There are a lot of different ways to do economic analysis. And I don't even know all of them, but so uh, number four, we can certainly get into it uh, this winter. And number... Four is investigating feasibility of the power lines. We've talked about this a lot. This is kind of to put this issue to bed one way or the other. Well, let's figure it out. Is it cost prohibitive? Is it too challenging? Um, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of that. Developing number five is developing recommendations for the corridor based on future land use and zoning policies. Uh, we don't have planners in the room, but this is, I feel like the corridor's opportunity to chime in on what could be the future land use plan. So we'll get into that. And what I'm planning on doing with all these is probably bringing a recommendation for at least cons mm. initial consideration and going from there. I'm not expecting this group to like analyze the township at a block by block <laughs> level. That would we would do that all year. If that's what we did. Um, number six, consider installations the East West Community Gateways. I'll just be frank. My vision for this is like, what is something fun that when you get to Waverly, so I'm in Delta Township now. Mm -hmm. Something besides just a. Uh, um, banner, which I no disrespect to the banners. I love the banners, but is there something fun? Is it like in my mind, it's something fun, something whimsical that is like like the Meyer giraffe. You know, like <laughs> what is the thing that when you cross the boundary, this is it? Uh, you know, like a China gate or some yeah. something fun, something big. Um, that that could tie into a lot of other opportunities. Number seven, support and develop public transportation options along the corridor. They're probably going to have more of a support role here, and it's, it's de depending on a lot of different things, including like the permanence of the Route 3 extension that's happening right now. So it, are there ways for the CIA to work, CIA board to work with CADA? Maybe they're develop some covered bus shelters at some of the more used stops here. Uh, we'll a lot more to talk about, and we'll engage the CADA and any other stakeholders along the way. Number eight, Enhanced business outreach, business development, communication efforts. This is what I'm doing, and it's it actually all kind of ties together. Me being new in this job, 
identifying people, documenting that, like that's all things. But I want to work this into something I can actually bring to the group um, to share. So what I'm going to start with is just a, a, a directory of the businesses on the corridor. Start there. We can classify them. I mean, that could ultimately lead to some kind of directory or like a shop Saginaw campaign or something. We can get into that. Number nine is working with our engineering department to um, look at opportunities to, um, what's the word? I don't know what the word I'm looking for. To implement, geez, uh, aspects of an unmotorized plan. Mm -hmm. So it could be there's a project in this location, and this is an opportunity for the corridor to work with, or the corridor group to work with MDOT and our engineering department to put uh, an enhanced road crossing and something like that. So that's where we're at. So we've got nine items. Um, like I said, I'm not looking for a vote necessarily, but now that with this, we're on the third look through this, if anyone see, sees anything that just does not jive or that's a, something is missing, um, I, let me know. I'm curious, I've never asked this before, but do, does the corridor have any, um, any utilization of, of video at corners or anything like that that the police know. would leverage or use? I don't know that we have that. We can find out, but I'm not, I'm not aware of any. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there are none for MDOT or... It just would be interesting if you had access to that to, to have somebody look at it and say, well, where are people crossing the road? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. No, it makes sense the only one I know of actually, I think is the news has one at Farm Bureau. Because I've seen the camera view. But remember when we had the oh, yeah. slog yeah. Right. last year? Yeah. They had a camera view from over here at Farm Bureau. I don't know if that's accessible or what this, but I could look into it. I know the, the hmm. our police have contacted us to make sure that they have access to our cameras all the time. And we're going to add cameras mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to it to give them some additional views of the mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm that mm -hmm. they wish they had that my cameras don't cover very well today. Yeah. Now we do have a very good drone that takes aerial photography oh, wow. and our IT director is good at using it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know there are works, plans in the works to get different photos at different times of year, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that plan is to utilize that and share those images with this group. Yeah, I don't have a plan of attack for that yet, but we do have something. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments about the Action plan. Start. Okay. Right. So this is how I plan on working, and I'm going to bring things to you kind of in the order they're on this document. But at the same time, if something, an opportunity comes along, we'll we'll jump right to that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for spending the time to to go through that. Appreciate it. So, um, any more comments? Okay. Oh, just one. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the uh, bearing the lines, um, I think, I don't know, uh, Brian, did we submit a report to you in terms of the cost? I know it's been years ago, but at least it, it might give you something to work with, yeah, something to it start with. It wasn't an official report, but BWL did some estimates for us. And at that point, it was basically, um, I know it was... Uh, 48 million for the whole stretch. So I think that broke down to like $4 million per mile per side of the road. So, or something like that, or half mile. What, I what can't remember they, the breakdown on it. I mean, probably wasted breath because I think it may be just not feasible for, for cost and based on the, the TIF plan and recovery plan. But I'm more curious what, what, and so what does it look like, Kelvin? When they bury it, I mean, are there then transformers occasionally? Because there's transformers <laughs> on poles now, right? So yeah, they're they're in the ground, which is problematic. It's one of the challenges mm -hmm. that we would face if we wanted to bury these lines, because these are a lot of them are high transmission. So yeah. there are some well, well, there's a lot of dangers of down power lines and that type of things and storms, which we've experienced. There's also a lot of dangers with groundwater and that with the higher uh, lines. So, um, but there's a lot of costliness to, you know, cooking into the neighborhoods and how much you have to dig up and back to the buildings and that type of thing. So 
Well, if you, if you decided just to delete that item altogether, we'd get you down to eight items and we'd have <laughs> less <laughs> friendship that's <laughs> needed in our group. <laughs> we're, we're, looking, yeah. we're looking for a magic bullet to kind of put that issue to bed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not just a... Yeah, yeah. Historically, it's been something that um, yes. there's been people in the township mm -hmm. and, and elected officials who have asked about it and are passionate. Know, it's, about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a desire. Yes. Um, and, mm -hmm. and no doubt, aesthetically, it would mm -hmm. certainly be a huge improvement. If you've been to places where they have down or buried power lines, mm -hmm. just from from the limited research that we've done and in, in consulting with experts at BWL and consumers and other areas, it's just so cost prohibitive. So getting to at least bring that information back so people feel comfortable enough that we've investigated it to a point that we can kind of rule it out as being feasible or if it I, is feasible, then it's feasible. Yeah, but right. if I also read an article though that said, well, it extends the natural life of the lines it dramatically increases the cost of repairs if they're needed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. More difficult to get to, and yeah, so we can take that yeah. down as the. Uh, uh, you would not mind re uh, removing it from the list. <laughs> <laughs> to even it up. Um, yeah, my view would be based on the limited knowledge I have. If you're asking me to take a position, is that it? I think it's a it's a worthwhile goal and ambition. But based on the recovery plan we have and the ambitions that we have to make other areas an impact, that would seem like it'd be a disproportionate utilization of funds mm -hmm. that could be used for other things. Mm -hmm. Disproportionate utilization of yep. funds. I'm right now. That's, a good one. That's a good one. That's just a good way to define it. <laughs> we write that in the report, Lincoln. <laughs> Quotes. Yeah. Now you know why I let him sit next to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Love it. <laughs> you read item two? Uh, oh, well, we're on new, so there's nothing else under old items. For um, number one, we've got the informational meeting mm -hmm. under new business. Um, no one came. <laughs> the, so just as a reminder, we I did follow the, so there are requirements. In the, in the TIF law, there was an update. We have to have two information meetings a year. There is a requirement for notice. So you have to send notices to the taxing jurisdictions to which we collect. So I sent those notices. Uh, I didn't, and the, not term. <laughs> they did, I didn't fear hear from anybody. I don't want it to reflect poorly on the jurisdictions, but they probably either know what we're up to already or aren't too concerned yet. Mm -hmm. But we'll continue to do this every year. I will not pack them into the November, December meetings. <laughs> we'll do we'll spread them out better. It was more like, oh my God, the end of the year is here. We need to do this. So so those went to the uh the counties. Yeah, it went to the county yeah, to the different LCC. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you get anything written from them at all? I didn't get anything written or or calls or anything about it. As Peter said, I think most of them, like the library, LCC, the county, mm -hmm. were in meetings with them. So oftentimes they, sure. they kind of know what's going on. So um, it's just a statutory obligation to set aside time if they do have questions. Sure. Thank you for that one. Um, other business staff update. Oh, well, um, under new items, we do have one more. So yeah. M. Dot Saginaw Highway Project update next steps. There's a meeting or a really brief memo in your meeting packet where I just kind of outline where we think we're at with the M. Dot project. Um, so with, there have been some discussions and positive discussions. So the, their team reached out to our engineering team um, who engaged with us, um, us being, I guess, managers, office staff. Uh, about kind of what where this is all going. So the as you probably know, but I'll re restate it, the project is highway west to Broadbent. That's it. There is no plan for the rest of Saginaw. I think they recognize that that work needs to be done, but there hadn't been any dollars had allocated for it. Um, but we all, they also have, at least their team has said, we, it wouldn't be surprised if that does get allocated at some point in the future. So it's not gone. It's just not scheduled now. 
So for that stretch over there, um, I think what the biggest role that we can play, and there's a lot of different roles that the board can play, but um, certainly a short term would be just supplementing outreach for MDOT, making sure that everybody knows what's happening, what's being proposed, getting feedback on the plan. Uh, the way that they've stated that it might roll out um, to us is this coming year, public input. The following year would be design work that would actually do the physical work in 2028, or at least start it, and then extend that work for probably a year, and it would be finished. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a long, it's a very long-term project. But the first two, the first two years are the most crucial part, or maybe the first year is the most crucial part for for this group. Um, so I do plan on getting that them here at some point. We have not actually met with their team. I've seen preliminary stuff. Um, I'm kind of they're they're just putting their scope. I, like they have a whole scoping process that they do before they even start the public input process. So um, I'm starting to understand who the players are and getting in front of them. We're, we haven't met internally, but at some point I'd like to have them here as well um, to talk about the project and but how this connects to the action plan would be um, really, we're kind of looking for input today on how to best engage in the design phase. Mm -hmm. um, the way I'm seeing this happening would be we could engage with a, a consultant firm uh, to put together some road cross sections. I think everyone has seen cross sections where they show like the building over here and they show a transect with a sidewalk, with landscaped area, like traffic lanes, you know, a boulevard, blah, 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 across the way there uh, to put some of those together for the, for us as to how kind of how we want to see it. Um, and then and MDOT had in an email had said this, like there, there is an opportunity for our team or whoever we choose to kind of work with them as the design process moves forward. So that's kind of my suggestion is that we start, we engage with a design engineering firm to develop those cross sections, including things that we've this group has talked about before, boulevard, green space, landscaping, access management, traffic calming, and then where buildings are, like where's the built environment start? So how does that space look? In, in the between um, that we have options. I mean, we could put this RFP out to every design firm in the area and they can bid on it. Now I, I was envisioning this and I've talked to other people in our, in our team as more of a conceptual drawing. We're not looking to have someone go out and survey the corridor and do really detailed <laughs> engineering work, but if they could just do some design, some preliminary conceptual design work that I think is, it's going to be able enough to, give an image of what we want to see to MDOT. What do you anticipate that costing? I don't know yet. We'd have to find a number. Um, I, I haven't gotten there, there yet. One option would be, so we have the pick of anyone we would want to potentially work with. This group has a history with uh, Progressive AE, Suzanne Schultz. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if you've been comfortable with working with them, that could be our first call. Um, we don't have to go, the way I understand is we don't necessarily have to go through an RFP process. So we're just really engaging with the company for professional services. So that's kind of I a path. I highly least. recommend them from okay. the work, from the how they've challenged other communities in MDOT in the past, just from what I know. I, I don't disagree, but I this seems to tie in with bullet point number one on the list to me. Of, yeah. Of, mm -hmm getting these drawings and renderings. And my personal opinion would be that I agree these shouldn't be architectural quality drawings. They should be sketches done as inexpensively as possible. <clears throat> and I think Susan and everything they've done for us has been great. I think it would be a bad idea though, not to get additional quotes so that we could tell the public when we're spending their money that we did that. Um, it doesn't mean that they wouldn't be the choice and doesn't mean you have to choose the lowest bidder. I think right. you got to get a scope of work and a conceptual understanding of what's going to get done. And if they're 10% high and there's a comfort level and the group decides to go with them, great. We can explain that to the community if we're challenged. Um, but if they're 40% high, we better have a really good explanation. <laughs> for it. If you need to, um help with the qualifications or RFP, let me know. Okay, thank right you. Now. Oh, good, okay. So, but I would, uh, yeah, that, I think that they would bring a solid perspective, really solid perspective. I just, 
depending on as the department, are they doing the scoping work in house or are they soliciting someone else? And that? Yes. As far as I can tell, they're doing it in house. Oh, please. Oh, uh, no, I think they're soliciting oh, for, they? those, okay. for engineering okay. work. I, I can double check. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Right. Yes. Yes. They are. Because that's that was what I actually saw was their scope. Okay. The services are, are going to send out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. There's I definitely, misunderstood. Either. There's Sorry. definitely an opportunity if we, I totally agree with Scott and, and the team is doesn't, you know, I would call like five, like up to 5%, 10% highly, you know, conceptual plan work, but very much uh, focused around uh, the public uh, feedback and what we're focused on. I think one of the things is, um, but you also want it, with that dot, you want to make sure that it passes a sniff test as right, well. Right, it needs to be real. It it's got to be, be achievable. Real. Correct. Otherwise, That's it's a waste of our time. You lose money. credibility and money. Yep. So it's got to be balanced. So I it definitely will ask for um, some type of uh, portfolio, right? You know, uh, not recommendations. But what's the word? Um, experience. It, past experiences. Okay. That would that would be when well, a proven track record or something. Yeah, done I, some I, stuff. Sure. Hey, that makes sense. Yeah, because that would that would definitely if they're really going to work together with them, that that's good. I think that'll go a long ways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like I'm hearing that we would progressive AE is certainly one option, but that we want to reach out to a few more. That's yeah. Just to make sure that yeah. we're we're being priced appropriately. Yeah. Okay. What, what's the, what would be the level of comfort with the board and head and staff do? the um, working through that process and interviewing firms or developing a scope and, and working with them to bring back recommendation? Or do you want to actually see all the proposals and the um, and, and do interviews? Typically with the township, we'll, staff will go through a pretty exhaustive process and we'll come back with a memo that kind of details all of our steps and they, you know, see the, the, the costs and that type of thing. Um, so you have kind of the history and then, and bring back a recommendation. So again, I think, yeah, go ahead. Please. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. Well, at the risk of being a, a thorn, I don't, <laughs> on one hand, I don't have any more time to give, right? So like the, the less, um, the, the less, um, time involved for us to do it, the better yet. I am very cognizant of mm -hmm. the political environment in Delta Township and beyond and some of the things that happen mm -hmm. with potential mm -hmm. conflicts of interest and what happened with Tony with, mm -hmm. I would just assume if we're going to have to put our, our name on it, I would like to have a level of detail that makes me personally comfortable with the analysis and the decision that was made. So that's, yeah, that's what, <clears throat> that's what we typically do is provide that detail. What, what yeah. I want to, I guess what I'm getting at is I want, just want to avoid like three or four months of yeah. interviews <laughs> and you know, that type of thing. I think we will participate if you need us, but I think the other approach yeah. is better. Yeah. So, yeah, I would agree. We just want the, the details and transparency so we can get it and not feel sure. like it was steered or directed at all. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Once the draft RFP is ready, that'll be our, our opportunity to review and provide mm -hmm. comments. Yep. Right. Before it goes out. Okay. Yeah. If that makes sense. And then at least you'll have all the guidelines and the selection criteria. And so mm -hmm. at that point, it's pretty much yeah. a matter of just going out and running through the process. I can work to have that ready for January. Sounds good, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's making it happen. Yeah. I told her we don't ever do anything if she came. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> That's exciting news. All right. Okay. So moving on to other business. 
staff updates? Okay, I got a couple things to run through and Brian may want to add some things along the way. Um, kind of descending order, the we had the ribbon cutting for Meyer. Uh, it was on a sa two Saturdays ago. Supervisor Fletcher was there. Mary was there. I was not. Uh, but it looked like quite an event. So that their reno $13 million reno uh, renovation project is complete. I think they've got some punch list stuff to get done because their back parking lot's still full of truck. Right. Yeah. Uh, all that. Uh, but the, from a consumer perspective, it's people can walk into every door and it looks different. And um, I depending on your perspective, I think it was a very successful project. We had some residents, um, you know, complaining about all kinds of various things that they typically would do, but mm -hmm. uh, I thought, thought it went really well, so it was nice to be a part of that. Um, the venue, so the board recently approved, recommended approval of a liquor license, so this development district's liquor license that we've talked about in the past, the kind of the corridor-specific ones yeah. that are facilitated because we have this group. Uh, the, so the board recommended approval for a liquor license for the venue at the mall, if you know for that thing. Um, so their application is through the township, then they just have to submit everything to the MLCC. And if um, Zap Zone is any indication, they I think they submitted in August, and I'm not sure if they've heard yet. So it takes a while to MLCC. So that's a there's a long burn on the on the results six, of this six but, to eight months they're yeah. right now wow. hopefully they'll they'll find out soon and six to eight yeah Jeez. we're buying a business in jackson so we have to pay for a conditional license and insurance because the mlc said well you'll be open five months before we ever look at your liquor license oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. okay <laughs> no worries <laughs> um, before i forget there is a expenditure report in your uh, meeting packet just showing kind of where you spent this year uh you're darn close to the budget as nothing went over so you're you're right there with what you're expecting to spend this year and you've got about one hundred eighty-four thousand in the bank sweet cool yeah okay yeah. Oh, technically 184 minus 70. minus 70 000. Oh, okay yeah okay right. that was what you want oh So we're in good shape there, and okay. uh, you've seen revenue forecasts for the coming year. Um, what else do we want to touch on here? Oh, in the media packet, there's also updated tenant changes. So this is the document I use to contract comings and goings of the township. The notable things to mention are um, in the short, the quick one here, the and I think we talked about this before, the best furniture outlet at the mall is open. If you haven't been over there, um, it's very, it's very nice, mm -hmm. um, but it's a really a big furniture store there at Macy's. Um, you probably saw the sign go up for K-Pot. If anyone knows anyone at K-Pot, please send them my way. I've been trying to communicate with this company for months. Um, <laughs> haven't been able to get a hold of anybody. Uh, but then the fun addition to this is iPot, Hot Pot Barbecue and Sushi. So if K-Pot love iPot. Uh, they are taking over the former Golden Corral building, which has been empty for a oh, while. Wow. It's a big wow. build. It's about 11,000 square feet. Wow. So that's a big, big new business. And you'll see there's a new restaurant going into the food court at the mall, the Carters. They haven't opened yet, but they're kind of soul food style. Um, Zap Zone, I just wanted to mention, um, you probably see a lot of advertisements on Zap Zone. Mm -hmm. I have noticed, and I've been talking to the owner, they initially had said they were going to be open on December 15th. That's this mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's uh, in the cards I or not. What, what may happen is a like a, a soft opening where they just open um, like some games, but not the restaurant part of it. So they're really working hard and fast. There's a ton of people over there working right now even. Mm -hmm. um, on that space. So I will keep you in the loop mm -hmm. on any kind of opening that I hear about, but I've noticed in a couple of recent communications that they've, um, haven't mentioned the December 15th date as much. Mm -hmm. So, but they're certainly going to be happening quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, great. Oh, that's so the system works. Zap Zone got their <laughs> liquor license. Thank you for the update. Uh, so those are those are the big corridor specific things I wanted to mention on that. Uh, I am I'm meeting this week with not so Stephen Kesto was on our EDC, um, uh, with a brother of his. It's a family that owns some properties on the north side of Saginaw. 
Um, they're across from ABC Liquor. Mm -hmm. It's some properties that are not in the best shape. Um, mm -hmm. There's some tell get tattered mm -hmm. awning mm -hmm. and some other stuff. So the good news is I'm meeting with them about kind of re envisioning what that <laughs> property and what it might what they might want to do. They're looking at options for redevelopment. Mm -hmm. So we're going to deal with that in short term. We're going to deal with that ratty awning to get that thing taken I down. I apologize if I'm saying this wrong, but is it Windermere, the area that they were talking about buying for a retention pond for, was it Lansing Board of Water and Light? They are, that is that is happening, but not on this project. Or what I'm talking about is- No, I, I know it was a different project. I'm sorry. Yep. Didn't, didn't mean to- No, no, no. But that's... I know there was some talk at one time they were trying to consider whether or not they might put some retail up front and still have enough room for the- water retention ponds and I just wonder if there's any update on that but no we'll be getting I mean I guess we there, there's no real new update That's for the, the public but they they have closed on that building mm -hmm. um there the Rafferty yep. high school so mm -hmm. they they will be using that for detention it it is their plan to preserve the space in the front um, and so barring anything that goes kind of awry with the design and which they're yeah. just finishing up and I think they're getting be, close to final. Um, it, it just, it, I just think it has the chance to, like Peter said, what, whether it's a giraffe or some mm -hmm. other, you know, beacon entering there, um, it's so close to that. It, it it's going to have a big, it's going to contribute a big visual impact, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever we do with that space, it's, it's material. Yeah, and I think uh, so far the inner county drain board has seemed very supportive of, you know, the good thing with this is we can kind of control it from the beginning. So we can kind of put out what we would like to see there or at least develop some parameters. So I think that part is going well. Okay. It's probably the least of our concern on the <laughs> yeah. project. <laughs> I'm actually excited about it because I think you could repurpose that area. It's mm -hmm. big road frontage, mm -hmm. which is valuable. It's close to the end that, you know, I think mm -hmm. has the greatest risk of, mm -hmm. you know, not staying up to date, obviously. So I'm excited about the project. I just, because if we can influence it too, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly. We'll see, I'll keep you abreast of that a bit. And the, the properties I'm talking about are right across from oh, ABC know, Liquor, know. like West West Thomas Parkway, where Lafayette yeah. is. Yeah. Kathy and I ask about the uh, overhang all the time. Well, I'm going to try to get that addressed. There's the <laughs> more and oh, we talked zap zone oh delta crossings uh really brief on this one yeah. brian and i a whole contingent of township folks met with their team including their construction team um so they're under the impression that they have really kind of the legal ability to move forward with the project uh the township's perspective is i mean we share we share that um but also that there are there's a punch there are punch list items that have to be addressed stemming from still from items in phase one so that's kind of the homework that we gave their team is to finish that stuff. For example, the road uh, that's yeah. out there has not been mm -hmm. dedicated to the county. Gotcha. Um, so they have a handful of things that they've got to address uh, before we'll see new permit permits for new buildings. But they are talking about starting new buildings mm -hmm. and proceed, same... proceeding with the development in the same manner that we, we've seen in the past. OK. Same same group. Same group. I don't, well, I don't know if it's all the same players in the same group, but it's still led by Chris, the developer. Chris, Chris. Chris. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. Yeah. position, right? Or is, is that, is yeah. that yeah. Chris is the okay. yeah. Yeah. primary contact? Correct. Okay. So that will, how does that affect us, right? When we started this whole process. It's back to the original. Does it go back to the original or is it, are we looking to reassess things or how does that? At, at this point, there's not really, in effect, I mean the the properties in the capture district. So okay. the you know anything that they proceed on, um, you know, still falls within the you know the CIA and that type of things. So so far they're you know talking about finishing up phase one, um, and two, and then they have ideas for the future phases, but those uh, you know will come at a later date. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, that's all I had. Do you have anything else you want to share? I think you covered pretty okay. much everything, unless there's other questions, other township related we items. Oh, no. one one thing that's not necessarily mm -hmm. on the on the corridor. I guess I, I 
can't announce the township was successful in a MISHTA housing grant. That's a just emergency. Um, it's a half a million dollars we received for <laughs> emergency home repairs um, for income uh, qualified folks. So congrats. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, Peter and Aaron did the uh, lion's share uh, the work on that. Um, but the the district we are focused on is basically from Kreitz East. So it kind of builds off of the corridor in some of our older uh, housing stock and older neighborhoods. So uh, we'll be rolling that out as soon as we get some guidance moving forward on project agreements and that type of thing. So uh, not directly related, but certainly, you know, kind of relates to uh, economic development and, and improvement and just uh, kind of fits together with a lot of other pieces that we're doing. And I'm glad Peter mentioned the, the liquor licenses because uh, creating the Corridor Improvement Authority gave us the, those tools to ha get those extra liquor licenses. So those are two, um, you know, main components of the model that will have a, another tool to help them stay viable long term. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So next item, our next regular meeting will be <clears throat> Monday, January 8th. 24. Oh, 24. <laughs> 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 Seems like these years have been going by pretty fast and everything. <laughs> um, all right, everybody's gonna be able to make it. Oh, yep. yep. All right, awesome. So thank you. This was a nice crowd. It's nice to not have to sweat out a quorum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ken decided to file this one because yeah, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. he's a, he's usually uh, you know he can always usually count on yeah. Him, so uh, had something come up, I guess. Yeah. So are we done with business for the day? Any yeah, comments? we're done. Right. We're done. Right. Motion to do a adjourn session four forty five p.m. Right. Support. Support. That's done. Great job. All right. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be back in an hour. So. <laughs>